Hi, uh, my name is Ann Smith and I work with Project Bazia, named for the gentleman sitting next to me, also for the place of his birth and his, uh, his uh, uh, grandfather. Uh, this is Anthony Bazia and uh, we together run a nonprofit here in Portland that is dedicated to helping young people, uh, especially the people of Bazia's homeland, uh, South Sudan. And uh, I want to uh, share with you today that uh, we have written a book about South Sudan and it's being released on Amazon. And I, uh, we're here to present the purpose of the book because it's, uh, it's far beyond just publication. It, it has a deeper meaning. Uh, the book is called Where Am I From? And it's dedicated to the children of South Sudan. In, in 2011, which is called the Year of Change in South Sudan, uh, this country declared her independence from Sudan, which was once one big country. It was the biggest country in Africa. Uh, her people waved the new colorful flag, sang the new national anthem, and shouted, Oye, which means uh, hooray. Uh, her people thought their troubles were over. United by their vote and the belief that better times were ahead, the South Sudanese began the process of building a new nation. Last year, in 2013, only two years after the year of change, civil war once again broke out in South Sudan. Many people died, many were displaced from their homes, and the faith of the South Sudanese people in the new government pretty much disappeared. The unity of the new nation also vanished as old hatred surfaced while everyone looked for someone to blame. The situation looked hopeless, and the whole world was watching. Basia, we know how the independence happened, and we know how much the independence meant to the South Sudanese people. 98%, uh, almost 99% of them, voted to separate their country. And they believed, they really believed that once they had a flag, and a country of their own, there would be no more fighting. But they're now fighting within their country. Why? First of all, it was a good, excited a moment for them. And it's like you have heavy thing on your head, and you just feel like you drop it. That was one of the, when 2011 take place and South Sudan vote on 98 or 99 to be a country. But they never talk about was the next move to be a nation. And uh, in my respect, and I would say, it, whatever happened earlier, I think, in different reasons, is good. If so you're saying this fighting now is good? It's good for one reason, because to be a nation is not only a flag. It's a process. Because all these people who get into power, they can background of guerrilla fight. And what they know, they know everything is about gun. And even to make South Sudan become a nation, it's not only about the gang. After the international community look at the issue because the issue be taking place for a long time. So the international community helped them settle the CPA, which divided the country, but stepped back and let them uh, rule themselves. And they had never ruled themselves. Yeah, they never ruled themselves to be a nation, but they used to be under the Khartoum government who running mm -hmm. the Sudan general according to the design that they want around the Khartoum according to them. But now when they became two country and different condition of to run the two country and according what the second citizen of South Sudan who became a country, they have their own way to believe what they want to be. And before the, before the Muslims or before the Arabs ran the country, it was the British. Yes. So they have never have a chance. Never have a chance to govern themselves. Right. So as, as you have said, there was bound to be trouble. That's right. It had to happen. Um, so are they making any progress? Uh, for me, there's a process is happening according after this accident take place. And it was not only about what people think in our side. I can put it, it was about the power. Mm -hmm between two leaders who are fighting to, to run the same country, but they never have a, a common in the way 
Uh, we are all the same nation if we want to run the country. The country have to be the, the president, the vice president, and even the very important for the country, the citizen of the country. If we raise the volume to make the citizen understand what it means to be a citizen of South Sudan, that's what's missing in the first place. And I think according to this flected happening, some people are in the sun. So this is not a genocide, which I have read in American newspapers and on blogs. It's not a genocide from my understanding because it's about the power. And if you look at it, they are more uh, hungry to be in the power because they've been fighting for 22 years. And when they get the chance, it's different. It's just like somebody who was living in a guerrilla fight and you bring him home, he have a nice car, nice food, nice bodyguard, and you're just going to tell him, I'm going to take this from you. I don't think it's, it's uh, easy. Okay. Uh, this is what I understand, and according to my background from my family, I have a little bit idea of what... So these, these leaders who are f leading the fight saw um, the reward of all their struggle as guerrilla fighters to, right. to be in power, power and to stay in power. To, to stay in power. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why did we write this book? Uh, the, the, the reason to write this book because we care about the next generation. We don't want to do the same mistake what happened right now in South Sudan. And we have to look at the positive way. Because whatever we do, it has to be a peace. Hatred, point finger among yourself, it doesn't help. And we want to pay the price for the people who die for this South Sudan, like Hero John Garang and others who die for this South Sudan and other who struggle to make South Sudan to be peace, we have to have peace and respect. And we have to think about the next generation. That's the purpose of this book. I know uh, one thing that I learned from writing this book was about something that exists in South Sudan apart from the people, which has had an incredible uh, effect upon the nation's history, and it's a swamp. Uh, South Sudan is about the size of Texas, and right smack dab in the middle of it, around the River Nile, is a swamp that at its peak flood is the size of the state of Alabama, and when it shrinks, it's still the size of Maryland. It's huge. Uh, and before the separation, I think the most interesting thing about this swamp is that before the separation, the people of the north were building a canal for the Egyptians so that the water in the Nile would go right through the swamp. There wouldn't be a swamp anymore. Uh, they paid, uh, I believe, something like $5 million in tons of equipment uh, to the north and said, build us a canal and then we can get our water faster. Again, an example of how little the Khartoum government cared about the assets of the people of the south. Now, as a person who loves the environment, uh, apart from my love of people, I could see immediately when I began reading about this as I researched for this book that if that canal had been completed um, within a very short time, maybe even 10 years, South Sudan would have been a desert. There would have been nothing but a river rolling, uh, flowing through the riddle, middle and no more swamp, which was supporting uh, an enormous amount of wildlife um, and the nomadic cattle herders. Um, would you say something about those people, though? Because I think they're a big part of the problem in South Sudan. Uh, this is one of the things. Uh, the Hero John Garang was uh, uh, include that in CPA agreement. They cannot accept the canal to happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was barred by the CPA. By the CPA. Good. And to protect the land of South Sudan, and maybe I can say in the name of God who protect South Sudan in a different direction. But uh, I was glad the Hero John Garang understand that and he was standing off against that. Okay. And that's take place in the CPA agreement. I believe that's gonna save a lot of life in not even in South Sudan, in Africa in general. Yeah, I think that whole eastern part of Africa would have eventually dry. been affected, dried right up because there was no more swamp, which slowed the water down and spread it out into the uh, into the rest of the countries. Um, one thing we talk a lot about in this book is, is something called diaspora. Uh, diaspora means the spreading of seeds, basically. Uh, uh, the Jews were in diaspora. 
uh, African Americans see themselves as a group from diaspora, and South Sudanese um, really see it very strongly that many of them fled, and uh, they are here now, um, or they are in the UK, or Australia, or Canada. They're all over the globe. Um, more than half a million South Sudanese still consider themselves South Sudanese citizens, but they live outside the country. Um, how can they help with the process that's happening back in their homeland? Uh, for me, I'm, I'm direct the message to them. They have to be more open mind of education. And there's two subjects in, uh, in the media now. Sometimes they make mistakes, uh, opinion and then facts. And I wish everybody listened to this interview. Uh, when you want to talk, you got to specific. If you say in your opinion, is a different thing when you say facts is a different thing because sometimes we are own people that will affect the other brother and sister according to what they just said because really education is not a it's not a fight it's, it's supposed to be a common sense understand mm -hmm. and before you speak think about it and and say it. well well you have a nation too that um, the people in diaspora are getting educated their children go to public schools. They have learned to read and write. But back in South Sudan, 95% of the people cannot read or write. Yeah, the, one of the so things. So they only go by what they hear. That's right. One of the things we hope to have is school. Uh, we hope to learn from the other country. But I'm surprised when we have people in diaspora, they compare South Sudan with America and Canada. I feel sorry. Because? Because. If you look at the United States to get dependent of the United States, it's like 200 years ago. You cannot compare a country have dependent for 200 years ago and the country have only two year old and a baby. I think the last thing I want to ask you is, uh, uh, I know you feel very uh, strongly about three people that you feel contributed to the independence of South Sudan and that you personally would like to thank them. Would you like to speak to that? Uh, the first person is the hero, John Dr. Grant. He's the one who fights for all these 22 years, even he doesn't enjoy it. Uh, and he passed away after 21 days or 20 days. Uh, we thank you for him. We thank you for what he does. And we thank you for uh, George W. Bush, one of the people who was part of to have the agreement of CPA, and then Tony Blair in London. And, um, I appreciate all of these three people, and I appreciate the South Sudanese who are watching this interview. I want them to learn, and I want them to understand this book is not only just about the book, it's about the right message for the next generation. And thank you. Thank you.